sleep. I only use this cart when I go on my trip, so I'm, uh, it's impossible that I'm going to run up a, a four, uh, close to $14,000. Jane, are you saying they don't give you uh, the record of what you spent? Exactly. They have refused. Now it's a year that they have refused to do this. Uh, and, of course, the only ones that they... Uh, uh, what is the remedy? Well, the, 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 what the remedy is is these people should be in jail. Their lawyers should be in jail. Their clerks should be in jail. And and, and, and the uh, offices of the company should be in jail. Well, Gene, why can't you have a record of what they say you owe them and uh, how you spend it? I do it? have a record of what they say I owe them, and it comes to 3100 and some odd dollars, and I paid them. Well, I'm talking about the $10,000. The $10,000, they completely claim... They, they, they refuse to uh, uh, to produce any uh, any claims of any any uh, charges that uh, you authorized or requested. Well, I don't see how that can happen, Gene. Uh, well, you don't see how it can happen. That's why I'm being sued for ten thousand dollars. Thank you. I'm glad to have you on my side. And this is a real case. And not only that, they 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 sub uh, they they uh, sabotage the certified mail uh, twice uh, that, that uh, on the two, th that's another thing, is that they, they sued me as if I, it was in two, uh, two separate cases when uh, under the law you're supposed to have only one bite at the apple. Okay. All right. of a mess. You'll have to... Well, what do you want me to do? You'll have to tell it all over again from top to bottom. Okay. No, there's nothing I can do with that. It's just spread all over the place. Well, we, it's very simple. All you got to do is divide it into the, uh, the institutionalized fraud. The first institutionalized fraud are the crooked lawyers uh, that <coughs> encourage uh, this Because that idiot pulled off my bumper. Oh, uh, I was 
I was going to go today, and I didn't have time. Oh, okay. Then you know where it's going. Okay. I'm going to get it, and I'm going to send it to you next week. Oh, really? Will my bumper fall off? Uh, where is it? Is it? Um, so left. It's the driver's uh, rear. Driver's rear bumper. Yeah, I got to go pull one of those off. I don't have any here. I'll have to go get one. That's oh, God bless you. I'll get you one. Oh, bless you. And I'll send it. Oh, bless you. How is everything else? Oh, everything's good. Uh, so what do you want for that? Uh, I don't, I don't, you don't owe me anything. <laughs> I think I do. Well, you know. You know, you've been too nice to me. Only shocks back, and no, I haven't been. Oh, the shocks are okay, aren't they? Huh? Your shocks are okay? The, uh, uh, piston shocks are okay? Oh, well, I, I got them, but I didn't open the package. Oh, okay, yeah, I sent them all back, and mine too. Because uh, I'm, I'm not going to even bother with that. I'll hold it up with a broomstick. I called, uh, Timothy Cacase. I hope this is on audio tape, and I hope it's on video tape, and I hope you heard it. And uh, I asked him, don't I owe you some money? And uh, he says, well, why? I says, well, for the things you did for the car. He says, well, what did we do? And I said, well, you tried to fix the uh, instrument panel so that I would have a clock and would have uh, the information center. He says, well, we don't charge for things that we don't succeed at. So he's really uh, a breath of fresh air in this horrible century of uh, ripoff. So he's a marvel and a model. That's Timothy Cacase at Master Mechanics in Yonkers, just before you get to the Bronx line. So that was a pretty uh, philosophic finding person who was like that. I kept saying, you sure I don't owe you some money? No, he didn't want any money. Uh, then I called the FCC. Might be able to do something with that. Press 9. All other callers, please stay on the line. If it's in Spanish, please press
Thank you for calling the Federal Communications Commission's Consumer Center. Now you say the great gouge on the right shin that you got at Bradley's falling down the escalator. What about that? I asked Franklin about the pain that he still has. He's had four serious falls. And I asked him about the lingering pain. Well, that's there. And I can't leave me crawling down the escalator. Uh, it did something to the foot. As I say, it doesn't hurt or anything. But when I put the foot forward, it, 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 uh, it doesn't... Uh, go as far as I expected to. Uh, and I think there's some little bit I, I can't lift this foot up as far as you normally can this way. Bend it upwards? Yeah. I can the bend instep? it upwards, but I don't think it... The instep or the yeah. ankle? Uh, Is it the instep or the ankle? I think the ankle. Other than that, is the right leg okay? Yes. Except, as I say, uh, for an occasional twin. And the right knee. Yeah. When the weather's right. Now, you said, uh, and that would be from the escalator fall. That's from the escalator fall. Mm -hmm. And that would have been in 1998, in April, thereabouts. Maybe no, September, October. Now, you started with your the last fall when Ishvan Kasari Jr opened the door and knocked you onto the concrete walk yeah. and you fell on your left buttocks. Yeah. And there's a pain there inside, yeah. way inside. Yeah. And, oh, but only when you walk.
Now, when I'm not walking, uh, no, there isn't a pain unless if I touch it or massage it or something. Oh, it's, it's sore to the touch. Yeah, that's right, yeah. When you sit down, is it pain? Not normally, no. And when you walk, does it pain? No. And when you sleep, does it pain? Yeah, it's, it's a trouble when I sleep because I can't, uh, if I try to turn over onto my left side, I can't do that, or I can do it, but it's painful. Yeah. Turning over or lying on your left side? Well, once I get there, I don't feel it, except the next day, I can tell. Uh, but it, but it's, it's turning over where it's painful. And then if I stay and lie on that side, I'm sure it aggravates it and makes it more painful the next day. Now, what about your left knee? You say, so left leg, that Rocky uh, had the leash around yes. and twisted, and he kept twisting your left leg? Yes. Yes, I think that's what's wrong with the knee? Yeah. What makes you limp? That knee? Yes. That knee is what makes you limp. Yes. But how about the shin? How about the foot? Well, I think that may accentuate the limp a little bit. But if if the left knee were okay, I don't think the uh, I think the, uh, the limp is chiefly the left knee. You can't put your weight on the left knee. No. Any, anything wrong with the shin or the foot there? No, except as I say about lifting my... No, foot. no, that's the right foot. We're talking about the left foot. Oh, no, the okay. left foot, no. And the left shin.
the cold weather this winter has acerbated them? No, I think so, yeah. Okay. March 3rd, 2001, Saturday, 2 p.m., 2.22 p.m., a magic minute. Could you tell me the uh, current balance and checking account? It's a chat with Glendora, and this is uh, Wednesday, uh, March the uh, 7th. We give thanks to God for the rich universe that God provides for us. Uh, we wonder if we're some of God. We wonder if uh, we are doing what God wants done, what God created us for. Uh, and we thank God for all these many blessings. And this great and spectacular uh, world, Earth, that we live on. Uh, I'm playing uh, audio tapes for you that happened during the storm uh, Saturday night, uh, Sunday, and Monday, and yesterday. Sunday, 12, 15 a.m. End of message. The time is 8 a.m. Sunday, March 4. Hi, I'm unavailable to speak with you right now. Please leave your message at the tower and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you. At the tone, please record Dr. your message. Brad when you have finished Seth. recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Supreme Court went out Friday, thank heaven. Uh, two, Dolan is okay. Three, recall is not a big, uh, a refile, rather. Several lawsuits have to be refiled. But that is not pressing. But what is pressing is McKenzie and Grayson, the $500 fine. And I got it all printed, and I hope to get it into the envelopes. But I don't have any stamps, Brad. And I won't be able to get out after this afternoon. Nobody will. Is there anything you can do with your postage meter? Not that you want to come to White Plains on a Sunday. 
But if you did, I could meet you there at noon, and we get the postage meter going, and then hope that my last cartridge will print uh, uh, Brooklyn, Raji, uh, Glendora versus Wormley, a cable vision lawsuit saying that cable vision is civil recall that was filed in, in 98 and improperly removed to the federal court, the one I told you about. Uh, I'll watch 949-9495. I'll watch it carefully and see if you leave a message. What a fix. The only other thing I can think of is to run around to all of the post offices and try to find stamp machines and get them out that way. But I know that McKaysey and Grace are dirty enough to say that this is not an act of God. Uh, therefore, you're in default. Therefore, you owe $500. They're just dirty enough to do that. Okay. Uh, that's all I can think of. Thank you, Brad. Thank you for many things. Thank you for many things over the years, since 1983. Bye-bye.
Did you hear what the groom said to his bride-to-be? He said, honey, I'm not much to look at. And she says, well, that's all right, dear. You'll be in the office most of the time. Access. Public file. Want to try, um, did you try his office? Do you want to take a message? Um, yeah, sure. Hold on. Let me get a piece of paper. Okie doke. Oh. All right, Glendora. Glendora. Yeah. 914. 949. 9495. Uh, did he ever use public access in Nassau County? Least access. I don't, I wouldn't be able to tell you. You don't know, huh? That's what I'm interested in, if he used it and what he thought of it. Okay. Least access. Did I say public access? I should have said least access. Least access. Uh huh. Okay. Uh huh. Okay, thanks. Well, so you, your, your name is Gondola and your number is 914. Nine four nine nine four nine five. Yes, please. Okay, I have him call you one night when I talk to him today. Oh, thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, I just want to know what he thinks of least access in Nassau County. Least access. Mm-hmm. Least access. Okay. Thank you so much. Yep. Bye bye. p.m. Monday, March 5th, 2001. Calling Blackwell, the Delaware Court. Hello, you've reached Brian Blackwell, the U.S. District Court for the District. 4.26 p.m. I'm unable to take a call at the moment. If you wish to, you may leave a message at the sound of the beep, and I'll return your call as soon as possible. Should you require immediate assistance, please press zero. Thank you for calling, and have a nice day. Well, I keep getting a recorder. Uh, it's Glendora. I was wondering if you could call me and give me the status of my case. Glendora versus Charles F. Dolan. 914-949-9495. Thank you. A poor excuse for a court. To the office of Barbara Conlon. I am unavailable to take your call. Please leave a message and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you. Uh, nobody seems to be answering the phones today. Uh, this is Glendora. Could you please give me the status of Glendora versus Charles F. Dolan? Area code 914 949 
for a taxi cab. I called 22 uh, taxi companies to try to get a cab to go to the post office to serve Raji. February 27th. When is 14 days? Uh, uh, would that be uh, February 13th? 27th? Yeah, it was the entered on the 27th. Okay. Yep, it's March 13th. 
That's March 13th. Now, the, uh, do you count the day of entry as one of the days? Or is it the day not including the day of entry? You, no, you don't count the date of entry. It's the okay. day after. So then would that make it the 14th? No. It's still the 13th. Okay. Now the 27th, and you count the 28th as starting the If you start counting on the 28th. No, that's okay. On. No, if you said February 13th, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, the next question is uh, uh, if I have it postmarked here by my. Uh, now you have to have it in in this office on the 13th. But how do you know how long the United States mail is going to take? Huh? How long do you know the United States mail is going to take? I, that's the rule. I just, I don't know. There's no mailing grace on petitions for rehearing. Yes, that's a, I, I read that. Uh, but still, a person doesn't know how long the post office is going to take, whether he has to mail it on the 10th or whether he has to mail it on the 9th or the 8th or 7th. How, how long do you know the post office is going to take? I don't know. I didn't make the rule. But All right. Could I talk to the person who did? Well, that's the judges, and they don't usually take calls, but, you know. I've, yeah, okay. It's the uh, rule. I mean, it's not going to change no matter who you talk to. Well, I know. It's not a rule that I'm asking to change. Mm -hmm. It's a rule, how do I know? How long the post office is going to take to get a letter from New York to St. Louis? Well, I, I you know, overnight it, I guess. Well, I don't have the money. I'm in former paupers. I have no money for that. That's a lot of money. That's like 12 or 15 Well, I guess call the post office and ask them. No, the post office doesn't know itself. No. Well, I, I can't. All right. Now, next question is, uh, who was the panel on uh, number uh, 004055? Okay. 004055? Uh, one moment. Please, I'll check again. Zero zero four zero five five. Yes. Glendora. Yes. Okay. It was Pasco M. Bowman. How do you spell that, please? Uh, Pasco P A S C O. P A S C O. Uh huh. Okay. M middle initial. M Mary. Bowman B O W M A N. Okay, thanks. And uh, James. B. Loken. B. Boy. Uh huh. L O K E N. L O K E N. And Morris. M O R R I S. M O R R I S. S. Uh huh. Arnold. Uh, no middle initial. S. Oh, excuse me. S. Sam. Arnold. Arnold. Uh huh. Oh, good. Uh, and how many copies on bank do you send for a petition on bank? How many copies? Uh, twenty-one. Twenty-one. Mm -hmm copies and what color is the cover? Uh, petitions for rehearing should be white or yellow. White or yellow? Mm -hmm. You wonder where the yellow went? I don't know. I don't know where the yellow came from. But you white remember, is fine. You remember the old Pepsi and commercial? You remember where the uh, where the yellow went? Uh huh. Now, uh, and how long can a petition for en banc be? Uh, wait a minute. I have to break up the old telephone handbook for that. Okay. Thanks. Take your time. I'm exactly sure. Take your time. Uh, no. Okay, so that would uh, 
So we don't have to count the seniors, right? So it's one, right now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight active judges. Eight active judges. And ju one and the senior judge, so nine. Eight active and one, one senior. And a chief judge, I'm sorry. Excuse me? I'm sorry, I said I said senior when I meant to say chief. Oh, oh, the chief and judge. One chief judge. So one chief nine. judge. And who is the chief judge? Roger Wollman. Oh. Roger, R-O-G-E-R. Uh, L, as in Larry, Bowman. Bowman. W-O-L-L-M-A-N. W-O-L-M-A-N. He's the no, chief. Two L's. Oh, okay, W-O, I knocked the L out of him. W-O-L-L-M-A-N. Right. Oh, thanks. And, uh, could you, t uh, could you tell me, uh, is it, then it's eight plus, uh, Judge Bowman. Is that right? Eight plus Judge Bowman, right. Yeah, and three of those eight are Bowman, Loken, and Arnold. Right. Okay, could you tell me the names of the other five? Oh, yes. Um, Theodore McMillian. Spe uh, spelling, please. T-H-E-O-D-O-R-E. T-H-E-O. Oh, Theodore. Okay. Theodore, uh-huh. Uh-huh. McMillian, M-C, capital M-I-L-L-I-A-N. Got it. Mm-hmm. No middle initial. No. And Richard. Yep. S S is in Sam Arnold. Oh, another Arnold. Mm -hmm. Okay. And David R. Hansen. H I think I can spell that. H A N S E N. Right. H A N S E N. Right. Okay. Diana E. Murphy. One N. Uh, yes. Diane E. As in Edward. Anna. Diana. E. Oh, Diane. Oh, then that's wrong. D I A N A. Right. Okay. E. Murphy. E is in Edward. Mm -hmm. Murphy. I can spell that. Oh, you can't spell that. M. U. R. I can't. I said I, oh. I said I could. Oh, okay. Yeah. And the last one? Kermit. K. E. R. M. I. T. Right. E is in Edward. E is in I. B. Y. E. B. Y. E. Right. Oh, thanks a lot. And your name is what? My name's Debbie. Debbie. Oh, yes, I talked to you before, I believe, Debbie. Oh, I, well, we have two Debbies, so it might not be me. But. Yeah, yes, it was the other Debbie, I guess. <laughs> uh, now, okay, I'm going to, uh, well, I guess a reasonable guess is that it would be three days. Yeah, uh, yeah, maybe allow an extra day just to be on the safe side. Uh, four days. Yeah. Four days from the 13th, 12th, 11th, 10th, 9th. Wow, that doesn't give me much time to write this. That would be the ninth. Uh, it would have to go out Friday. Well, Debbie, thank you very much. You're welcome. And uh, let's see. I'll tell you the joke of the day. <laughs> what did the lawyer say to the judge? The lawyer said, I want a new trial on the basis of new evidence. And the judge says, what is the new evidence? And the lawyer says, I just found out my client has another $3,000. Oh. <laughs> oh, did you get the snow that we got? Uh, no. Are you, uh, you're in New York? You're oh, yeah, we really got... Shining here, it's very nice. Oh, wonderful! Mm -hmm. It came from you, I think. It came wet, came from the west. But anyway, we had two storms in one day. Oh my God! We had number ten of the season was uh, sort of in the morning, uh, freezing rain and sleet, and uh, then in the evening, starting in the evening, we had number eleven with six inches of snow. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you didn't get the three feet they were predicting, though. Well, well that, maybe, maybe, not three. Did they predict three? Uh, well, here they were saying one to three feet. <laughs> they were really being a pro, have, have, give themselves a big leeway. <laughs> yeah, they better. Uh, no, I think there could have been one to two in the northern and western uh, uh, parts away from New York City. I think that could have been one or two, but we're only uh, like 30 miles from the city. Yeah. Yeah, but we got enough. All right. Well, have a good day. We got enough, let me tell you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. Time is 1.44. My goodness. I've got 13th. Has to arrive on the 13th, the 12th, the 11th. Mailed on the 10th, maybe. What do you think, Franklin? First call is to Bill Budrow. Hello? Hi, Bill. It's Glendora. Yeah, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Good. Yeah, 
calling you back. I got those great big important legal papers out. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, they they went out. They were huge, and uh, one was 90 pages and one was 60 pages. Yeah. Wow. And they're out. They're they're served. And this guy, uh, these judges are crooked enough to say that these storms were not an act of God and that the papers were late and therefore you lose. Oh, for Christ. So so that's what they would be crooked enough to do. So I got them out. Oh, great. Yeah, there were five great works. They're done. Okay. Yeah, that uh, that judge that they've been working on over in uh, White Plains is a guy by the name of uh, McMahon. Yeah. yeah, a woman, Colleen McMahon. Uh-huh. Oh, good, thanks. Uh, who told me that? Peggy, I think. Uh, Peggy, then Michael told me, you know. Oh, Michael Brown told you? Yeah. Oh, good. That's She's a bad one. Yeah, so I think he was going to... I forget now if he was going to make up some 372s or make up a program on her, you know. Oh, good. Yeah. Good, I haven't got the tapes yet. Yeah, oh, you haven't? No. Well, probably because of this weather, but gee, that's been a long time now. That's not so bad, not so bad. Well, the weather's nothing, but they make a big thing out of it, you know. Yeah. They even closed the uh, uh, the main highways down to all the truckers and so forth. Yeah, they shut down I-95. Isn't that something? They sent I-95 down, they sent the truckers down the Merritt? Well, no, they can't send them down the Merritt because uh, the bridges are too low. They can't get trucks. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they made them all pull over to the uh, truck stops in the uh, rest areas, you know? Isn't that awful? And they were packed full, and the roads are completely clear. There's not a piece of ice or nothing on them, you know? Dump. So then the state police went along today and started giving some of these truckers a two-hour pass, you know? Only for good for two hours, you know? So a lot of the truckers are saying, well, hell, by the time I get to the store and unload, it's going to be take me two hours to unload, you know? Wow. Well, they're going to have to stay and wait again then, you know? Oh. Unbelievable, you know? Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. And did you uh, happen to see that uh, uh, was Bill O'Reilly last night? Who? Uh, Bill O'Reilly. No. You don't watch him on TV? No. Oh, he's one of the big talk show hosts. I guess he's number one in the country now. You know, something like a Larry King. Oh. And what they're doing is they're having a continuous thing on uh, stories about corrupt judges and stuff. You know? Oh, good. And last night they had the one uh, from, uh, let's see, where the heck was he from? Uh, gee. Trying to think of where the... Uh, where he was from. Gosh, I got it right in my mind. But anyways, uh, it was a Isaac uh, Bornstein. Oh, I know where it was, Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And they told this, uh, they were talking about this Isaac Bornstein, and they say that how come people haven't uh, thrown him off the bench, or how come they haven't tried to impeach him? He's so bad, you know, and so forth. Good. So what they're doing is this uh, other guy that comes in gives them a continuous thing. In other words, he'll be back maybe next week or whatever, and they pick another judge, you know. Good. So they're trying to clean up the judicial system, you know. Good. So I'll have to find out more about that for you, you know. What channel? Uh, he's on 22. On channel 22? Yes. Oh, that's good. What time? Well, he's on several times during the night. They repeat it, you know. So you just have to kind of watch him. He kind of exposes everybody. He uh, knocks the hell out of the president and all those different people, you know? Good. But he thinks that the judicial system is the most corrupt that's ever been in this whole country, and he can't understand why the uh, people aren't uproared about it and do something about it. Yeah. The Senate and all those people, you know? I agree. So, well, boy, they really knocked it, you know? So And they really knocked this judge, you know? My goodness. Bornstein. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah, so I'll have to find out more about that for you, too, and keep on top of that. But it looks like things are perking up everywhere. Oh, good. Yeah. I'm going to call Dating next, and then I'm going to call Brown. Good, good. That's uh, good, because Brown can uh, also help you out on uh, any time you want to. Uh, he was talking to me last night about uh, there's another fellow that he knows that got hurt in the judicial system also. And he would be able to make tapes because he's a speaker or something. He was telling me about it. I should write this stuff down because I try to remember too much, you know. Okay. 
but anyways, he's going to help us, you know. Oh, good. So, uh, Brown will tell you about him, I guess, you know. Oh, good. Okay, real good. So that's basically the uh, up-to-date news I had. Oh, that's good. I'm glad you had it, and uh, when the tapes come, I'll call you. Yes, okay, because uh, I can't understand why they're not there, but maybe because of the, uh, they're all closed in uh, Connecticut. All the post offices have been for two days, you know. Oh, they aren't closed here. No? No. Well, they are here. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. No delivery, no nothing. I thought uh, neither sleet nor rain, <laughs> neither sleet nor rain nor... The most snow we got was like three inches, you know, it's really nothing. <laughs> it's really nothing. All right? the side roads and everything were all clear. People drive around, but all the businesses are closed. I did call Joe Brown, I mean, uh, Michael Brown, and uh, I did leave a message, and he called me back and left a message, so yeah. I'll, call, I'll call again. Yeah, he's uh, very reliable, and usually he's there, you know. Yeah. But he's very reliable. When I leave messages, boy, he always calls me back, you know. Yes. Okay, real good. Well, I hope you luck with him, you know. Okay, how's uh, Celeste? I haven't heard any more yet. Okay, all righty. Okay. Take care. Yeah, bye. Bye-bye. Detroit Court, United States five. District Court, Detroit. Three, five. You've reached the chambers of the Honorable Gerald E. Rosen. We are unable to take your call right now, but if you leave a brief message, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Please also leave the date and time of your call. It's very important that we have the date and time of your call as well. Thank you very much, and have a good day. Recording. Uh, the time is 4.52 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The day is March the 6th, uh, Tuesday. Uh, 2001 Anno Domini. Uh, this is Glendora 00 73541. I would like to know the status of that case, Glendora versus Gerald M. Levin. 914 949 
Hold on a second, I'm sure you want to talk to him. <laughs> you better have, hold on a second. <laughs> Peggy Data. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, the five great papers are out. The five great papers? Mm hmm I was working on the United States Supreme Court. I am uh, filing a petition for writ of certiorari there. Good. That, that one's out. And uh, then uh, number two was uh, two crooked judges, uh, Mukasey and uh, Greenisa in the Southern District of New York, uh, saying I had to f pay a $500 fine because I filed a lawsuit in Alabama. Oh, <laughs> And uh, then another one was uh, Glendora versus Lemley, Cablevision, where I maintain their civil recall. The case was bought in 1998, and I just heard from the judge two years later. Oh, jeez. And that's in the Eastern District of New York, Brooklyn. So those are three great papers, and they're on their way. Great. And the other two are done, so I got sort of caught up a little. That's good. A new fight came in today. That would be the Eighth Circuit, which is headquartered in uh, St. Louis. And uh, I sued the New York Law Journal uh, because Cablevision obviously paid them to say everything good about Cablevision, everything bad about public access and about Glendora. And so <laughs> it went right over the, uh, the judge's head in the district court. That would be in Little Rock. I filed that in Little Rock. <laughs> <laughs> and then it went to the Eighth Circuit in St. Louis, and it's there now. Oh, that's great. Oh, no, they dismissed it. That's right. And they dismissed it, and they didn't even say what judges had it. They didn't even... So it's a whole thing as a nullity, and I'm in the process. That's the newest one that came in today. Well, you certainly keep busy. Oh, well, boy, it's a strange thing. You go to court for justice, and then you find out that uh, the courts have been sold, uh, that you don't own them anymore. I know. Uh -huh, and they aren't the people's courts anymore, so now you got a new fight. So, you know, it's like, it's like uh, baking. You know, when I make something, I don't say that I'm going to make a pie because it might come out like pudding. Or I don't say that I, <laughs> I don't say that I'm making a cake because it might come out like uh, something else. So I never name anything I bake until it's done. <laughs> then, then I give it a name. Uh, but it's, that's like it is going to court. You know, you go to court for justice, you don't get it, and so. But all of a sudden you say, Oh boy, you're happy because now you've caught another one. That's it. You that's caught another one. You're right. You're right. Yeah. What have you been doing? Fighting the way. Good girl. Good girl. That's my days, every day. I know, you're terrific. You're a great American. <laughs> we try. We great American. We try. So you must feel good that these are all out. Oh, yeah, that they're all out. I, just, I applaud and applaud and applaud and the dog wags his tail, so... 
<laughs> That's good. <laughs> what would we do without them, right? <laughs> right. And, so <laughs> and now I've just talked to uh, Bill. Uh -huh. He's okay. Good. And now I'm going to call Michael Brown. Oh, great. I think I'll send you a copy of uh, McCasey, the great American document that just went out uh, yesterday, and uh, of uh, uh, the... Um, uh, the Gwendor versus uh, Lemley. I, I think I'll send you that my paper on that. Oh, good. I'd like to see that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Because uh, Def uh, don't withhold a thing. We tell them. And a lot of the stuff that you wrote, uh, I in uh, intercepted into that paper. Oh, great. Yeah. That's good. I'm glad that was helpful. Yeah, it's good. That's good. It's good stuff. Well, let's hope they go in the right direction. Yes. Uh, so... That's all. Uh, keep me posted. I will. All right. Thanks for keeping me up to date. All right. Uh, you didn't get the storm that we got, right? We're snowed in. We're, by the way, it's Oh, you are? You did find Yeah, we're, we're, we're snowed in two days. It's nice. Yeah. How much did you get? <laughs> uh, well, uh, it was Monday. It started with the ice and the uh, slipperiness and the sleet. And so that uh, kept you in. You didn't dare even go off the porch on that. And then uh, last night it started with six inches. Uh huh. Okay. And that's what we've got this morning. And you can't get anywhere. So you just, it's kind of nice. Yeah, it is. I remember those days. <laughs> it's kind of nice to be snowed in. It's about the fourth time this year. <laughs> it's been a terrible winter. I know. I know. We've been watching it saying, we're glad we're not there. <laughs> I'm freezing today because it went down to 60. <laughs> Uh, so here's the snow. Uh, here's the snow joke. Of the okay. Year. Just a second. I got a frog in my throat. <coughs> uh, the doctor told a man named Harry, uh, "You mustn't shovel snow. Uh, you'll have a heart attack." So Harry went home and he said, "Son, will you shovel the snow?" And his son said, uh, "Yes, Dad. I'll start immediately." And, and that caused Harry to have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> because his son said, yes, I'll start immediately. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Peggy, you going to send me some tapes of your story? I want to get your story on TV. Yeah, I'm going to try to get to that this week. I haven't got the tapes yet from Bill Brown, but uh, Bill Budrow sent them to White Plains, and they're, they're on their way. Okay, good. Yeah, so I'm uh, looking forward to showing those on TV. Okay, great. Yeah, I'll try to get some extra time slots and uh, fill up the channel. Terrific. Okay. Okay. All right. Done deal. All right. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. There's a judge name done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the D U N N E uh, in the uh, Nassau Supreme Court, state of New York. In Buffalo, there's a a, a lawyer named Moot. <laughs> his father is a. a uh, and his son is a lawyer too, named Moot. Isn't that funny? It is. You take care. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Talking to Glendora. Glendora, it's Mike Brown. Oh, excuse me. But that'll work out. I know it, Bill Brown. He goes right across the street. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. I, I don't care what you call me. <laughs> you have a common enemy. <laughs> and you are a great American history uh, he hero from everything I hear. Well, who have you been talking to? Uh, Bill Budrow <laughs> and uh, uh, Peggy Dating. And the, the tapes uh, are ha have been sent to me at White Plains. Uh, we haven't. There was no sign of them Sunday, and we haven't been able to go out because we've been snowed in a couple of days. But here's what I'm going to do with those tapes. I hope to fill up the public access channel with them. Okay, well, Bill Budrow has them. Did he send them to you? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, they're on the way. He sent them to us just as soon as he got them. Okay, well, if you want more tapes, we'll sure make them. Well, I think this is terrific what you're doing. I look forward to seeing them. And then I look forward, uh, particularly in Long Island, they have a very good public access operation. Wait, where, do you, where exactly do you have your program here? Okay. Okay, let's start. Uh, all right, Ma Manhattan. Manhattan. Uh, Time Warner. Uh, Queens. Queens. Uh, Bronx. Bronx. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Staten Island. Staten Island. Those are the uh, five boroughs. Then Long Island, from all the way across Long Island, every system in Long Island, they're all owned by one person, okay. uh, Cablevision. But it's on all five systems, so it's the whole of Long Island. Okay. And then across the Hudson River to Rockland County. Okay. And then all of Westchester, uh, Yorktown, Yonkers, uh, all of Westchester. Okay. 
uh, and then uh, uh, Buffalo, New York, the south towns of Buffalo. Okay, that's, and, that's 10. <laughs> and then uh, Los Alamos, New Mexico. How did you wind out out in the Los Alamos? Well, another public access producer had uh, her programs on there and told me about it, and I sent mine. They've been playing them for almost two years. Oh, excellent. Okay. In Santa Fe. Santa Fe. New Mexico, same story. And Portland, Oregon. Portland, Oregon. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, uh, yes, but actually they're different cable systems so that it mounts to 23. Oh, okay. Well, I know Bill Budger, I wanted to get you on in Memphis, too. Yeah, we're trying that. Uh, he has a f contact down there named uh, Jim Finney, and that's my next call after talking to you. Uh -huh. And I've talked to those people about uh, the public access people in Memphis, and I got the application started to come to Finney. Okay, good. And uh, so we make that out and get that off. I understand you liked my 372s. Oh boy, terrific! I think you're. I like everything you do. Uh, who do you hate in the Second Circuit? The entire en banc. <laughs> what about in White Plains? En banc. Oh yeah, I heard about what you did to. Uh, uh, don't tell me. I heard about what you did to McMahon, Colleen McMahon, and she is a sleaze. She ruined the case of mine. Greatest, one of the greatest fights ever. Are you serious? No! She's a real sleaze. How would you like the honors of doing the first 372 on her? Well, yeah, I would, but uh, how do you do it? Well, it's real simple. Do you have an email address? No, I don't. Can you send it to me by snail mail? Yeah, hang on a second. I'm going to have to go get a pencil paper. Yeah, good. Just wait one Good. Let's go after her anytime. Because, uh, hang on. I was watching, I uh, monitored her court not too long ago for a while. Oh, yeah, well, she's a definite dirtbag. Yes. There are no ifs, ands, or buts. Oh, good. Okay. okay. My, my address is Glendora. Hang on a second, Glendora. Mm-hmm. Glendora, okay. Box 416. Box 416. White Plains, New York. Okay, White. Hang on a second, White Plains, New York, okay. 106. 106. Zero 02. Zero two, okay. And my, put, I'll put my number right down beside it. Nine one four. Hang on a second. Nine one four. Nine four nine. Nine four nine. Nine four nine five. Nine four nine five. Yeah, where were you born? But, uh, Montgomery, Alabama, first capital of the Confederacy. Oh, good. Every uh -huh. time somebody asks me, well, brother, if you leave your country, why don't you leave it? You know what my answer is? <laughs> all right, but Abe Lincoln, all them Yankee soldiers wouldn't let us. <laughs> So, and then did you go to school in, uh... Arkansas. Uh-huh, you went to school in Arkansas. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, uh, actually, I was a service brat. Uh, my mother was there when the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. Oh, my gosh. You know, so, it's, uh, you know, the thing is, is, I mean, here we fought World War II, and what we've got is just as bad as what we fought. Well, it's it's a World War II all over again. Oh, uh, well, the thing is, yeah, I've developed all sorts of techniques to get these judges... Oh, good. And I'm really glad to make your acquaintance because what you're providing is air support. Oh, really? Because I expose them on TV, and not only do I do the video but the, and the audio, but I have a terrific uh, graphics up there mm -hmm. uh, for the judges. It says crooked lawyers, corrupt judges. Uh, it says uh, when judges violate your civil rights, uh, sue judges, Title 42, U.S. Code, 1983. Problem it, is that only works for state judges if you can get a federal judge. Oh, yeah, I've gone after, I've sued so many federal judges. I, I sued 45 of them on January 4th for breaking the laws. <laughs> uh, but another judge got a hold of it, right? Oh, sure. Okay, what's but I don't care, I made the record. Oh, it went to Arizona. I did it in the United States District Court in Arizona. Uh, who'd you sue? Was a judge there? Oh, no, I sued 45 judges. Yeah, but where were the 45 judges? Where were they? Yeah. Oh, uh, they were, uh, some of them were in the Third Circuit, some of them, or most, a lot of them were in the Second Circuit, some were in the First Circuit, uh, some were in uh, the D.C. Circuit, Gladys Kessler, uh, William Young. Okay, uh, so, have you ever seen a 372 before? I've filed quite a few of those, yeah. Okay, well, see, I have a different way of doing it. Okay. I have uh, what I call the mosquito bite theory of judicial discipline. Oh, good. You ever been bit by a mosquito? No, but a thousand would... Well, I saw that in, in one of your 372s. A thousand will kill you. Yeah, exactly. Well, see, that's the way I do it. I have people all over the country. Great. You're a great man. With your with your TV program, we yeah. get even more line infantry. You mean having people write and... and uh... Yeah, see, because here's the beauty of this. <clears throat> um, 
They do all sorts of stuff to cover this up, but it's a real career wrecker. And that's what you're after. In other words, yeah. they want to take our rights away. We wreck their careers. Good, good. In fact, there's a case there. It's um, You might want to take a look at. Did you ever go down and prowl uh, at the White Plains Courthouse? Which one? The federal courthouse? Federal courthouse, yeah. Yeah, because there's three of them. You know, there's a city court is as corrupt as can be, and then the county court is <laughs> outrageous, yep. and then the federal court is uh, terrible. What? And the worst guy there is Brian. Have you ever heard of him? Uh-uh, uh, no. So I've, I've been at war with McMahon. Okay, good. In fact, if you go in there uh, and you pull up uh, United States versus St. Germain. One moment, please. I am. Okay, one moment, please. United U.S. versus Saint Germain and Larry Laspina. G E R M A I N E. G E R M A I N. Period. Just no E. And Larry Laspina. Laspina. L A S P. P I N A. Uh huh. Okay. Now, now the docket number is ninety nine dash three three nine. Ninety nine dash three three nine. Only three numbers. Yeah, that's correct. Now, do you know how to read? Zero three ninety nine. Yeah. Do you know how to read a master docket sheet? What's that mean? Okay. The master docket sheet is the day-to-day -day record. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, if you go to Laspina's master docket sheet uh -huh. and then pull his file, you're going to find that I set the record for the 20th century on pretrial motions, 900 pages. Wow. Yeah, in other words, <clears throat> every mistake this bimbo made, oh, water. McMahon? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I haven't even warmed up on her yet. Oh. See, what I'm planning on doing is completely destroyed. Well, she's pretty well destroyed anyway. <laughs> but it's good. <laughs> I mean, what do you know that I know? Well, I know that I had this case before her. Mm -hmm. and, I've, and I've gone in and I've monitored her. Okay, what have you noticed about her that I need to know? Well, uh, let me first of all, what comes to mind, tell you how they operate this. The White Plains is a branch of the Southern District of New York, Manhattan. Uh, look, I not only know all about White Plains, but I can give you the figures and show you that every criminal trial that has taken place there for the last half dozen years has been in violation of the Sixth Amendment. You'll find it in one of my motions. Oh, uh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, but I'll tell you that probably McMahon will be... Uh, shoved down to Manhattan uh, on the next newly appointed judge, because that's where they send the newly appointed judges, up to White Plains. And then the other ones go down. Yeah, but she's a Democrat. <laughs> They're not in power right now. <laughs> so she'll probably go down to Manhattan, I think. Okay. If she follows the, uh, the uh, like, Case, Casey was there before her. That courtroom, that's the way you do Casey was be there before her. And uh, uh, Jed uh, Rakoff was there before her, and uh, that's the way they do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, what you're telling me is that <clears throat> now she's going to the man. Oh, and Barbara Jones was there before her. She's terrible. Barbara Jones, you know anything about her? Uh -huh. Okay, go ahead. No, right now I've only got a war going with Ralph K. Winter. Oh, he's outrageous. Well, I've got him. I mean, you want him? I'll serve him to you on a silver platter. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, I've got, I've got enough information on him. Oh, yes, he's, he's, I've sued him so many times. Well, see, the thing is, the problem is, every time you've done it, you've done it by yourself, correct? Yep. Okay, you need reinforcements. Okay. Okay, and that's what I'm going to get you. In other words, we're going to teach everybody with your program how to do an avalanche of 372s. Yeah, I know that's your modus operandi. Well, it works. I mean, ask Bill Budrow, I, I did... See, I created not only the the uh, saturation carpet bombing technique of 372s, uh -huh. uh, but I also invented the toilet paper 372, the salvo 372, the broadside 372. Uh, I mean, uh, I can show you all kinds of tricks that to wreck a judge's career. He's a federal judge, or she's a federal judge. I've got two of them. I got, uh, let's see, I got... Ramirez out in California. I scraped him off the bench in December of 89, and Peggy Daddick and I got Joseph Hatchett. Uh, in yeah, I see that. He came. But what happened to Torfu or to, Tio, whatever his name was, that she wrote a 372? Yeah. Huh? Uh, Yo Flat? Yeah, Yo Flat. Uh, he's still there. We haven't got him yet. Okay. Now, you've got to be careful of your language, okay? Because if you threaten a judge in any way, they got you. I use words on paper instead of bullets. There's nothing they can do about me. You've got to be careful. 
Oh, I understand that, but see, there's a... Because uh, you don't have to do anything wrong for them to charge you, as you know. Oh, I understand it, but yeah. this is a war. It's got nothing to do with rights or justice. This is a war. We're using words on paper instead of bullets. And in a war, you've got to take chances. Yeah. Be careful. Well, I understand, but yeah, I did my time. I did three and a half years. Yeah, I want to hear about that, too. I want to interview, oh. I want to interview you and put it on my program. You know what? That would probably be a really good interview. In fact, uh, we could... Excuse me. <coughs> um, I could probably fly up there and get Larry Laspina's brother, because one of the people that I want to I want to see trounced is Ron Kuby. You know about him? Oh well, yeah. He is a double-crossing little weasel. Really? He is. He sucks up to the judges and the prosecutors like you can't believe. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and to heck with the client. Pardon? And to heck with the client. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Mmm, that's Which bad. Paid him over a hundred grand, and he's. I mean, he betrayed him at every opportunity. Oh. You know, so it's, uh, you know, if people can just be taught to do their own legal work and then taught to retaliate, we'll get someplace. The, the biggest problem with the people on our side, they don't fight in formation. So they what? They, they don't fight in formation. In other words, they, oh, okay. if you're going to accomplish something and you have an enemy, the only way you get anywhere is you have to apply the known rules of warfare, even if you are just using words on paper instead of bullets, and you have to fight in formation. In other words, you can file one 372 on McMahon, and you know she'll she'll know immediately. Hey, uh, she's just had a black mark on her career. But when we spread it out all over the country, and people from all over the United States start filing 372s on her, she's going to understand that you have just learned to fight in formation. What is the logistics of uh, getting people, of uh, getting... I to my people in the prison system. I'm in touch with half the prisons in the country. I send them into guys like Jim Nolan. Down. What do they do, just sign them? No, 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 no. What they do is they copy them and they send them to their family on the street. And then they're, see, it doesn't do any good to have people who are not registered voters sign them. I guarantee you there's no congressman in New York if Rich yeah, uh -huh. voters sent in 10,000 copies on McMahon, McMahon would be destroyed, period. In what way? You don't think she wants to eventually go to the Second Circuit Court of Appeals? In the dream of the Supreme. Yeah, exactly. Same with the Supreme. But, 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 but why is she destroyed? And those, those are bad words. You mustn't use those words, really. Oh, her career is destroyed. Yeah, that's better. Because, see, here's the problem. Uh, and I don't know how, how much you read of what I did on, on Gibbons. Oh, yes, I read a lot of that. Okay, but any time that a judge is nominated for another position, they're supposed to put three names in nomination. The president then has the FBI run a background check on them, all right? See who's going to be the least problem. Now, let's say that you, I, and your husband were up to be federal judges uh, in the Second Circuit Court of Appeals, okay? I've got one judicial misconduct complaint. You've got two. Your husband's got 3,500. Guess who isn't going to make it? Okay. See? In other words, yeah. you, want, you basically want to build a record that this judge is a complete moron. Somebody ought to, yes. Okay. And that's my specialty. I'd like to make an aside here that somebody should do a background check on the FBI. <laughs> well, you know what they call the FBI in other countries, don't you? No. Secret police. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. The secret government. Yeah. yeah the secret police. But, mm -hmm. um, right. Mm -hmm. uh, you can you can do the honors of the first 372 against McMahon. Because see, here's the hilarious part of this. Uh, okay, no commitment, but send it to me. Okay, well, that's okay. If you don't want to do it, I've got other people, all right? But all I was going to do is give you the opportunity to be the point man or point woman on this one. Because what do you think she's going to think is if 10,000 more come in? After you filed the first... Have you ever accomplished 10,000? No, we got up to 5,200 with Hatchet, and he's now in private practice. That's 5,200 with Hatchet, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It only took five to get uh, uh, McCullough off Budrow's case. But that was five different ones. Oh, you, th mind, well, you think that he actually recused because of those? There is no question. There was no other reason for him to recuse. Well, he doesn't go by reason. No, but see, he's a power-mad little dweeb, just like most of them are. He's a power-mad little what? Dweeb. Uh -huh. Like a geek or a nerd? No, I've never heard of dweebs, okay. 
They're like geek <laughs> nerds. Okay. Geeks to legion nerds. That's what they get. You know, that's that's the pool they get federal judges from. Okay. You think that was it, huh? I know it was it. And so he went to Gibbons out of the pan into the fire. Okay. See, what happened was McCullough not only um, recused himself from the Budro case, mm -hmm. uh, just how I think it was January 20, what was it, January 25th, he ran all the government prosecutors out of his courtroom. He turned on yeah. his own. Yeah, I heard Bud told me about uh -uh. that. Uh-uh, well, that wasn't an accident. Mm-hmm. Or that was, he wasn't just having a bad day, he was having a bad career. Well, that's, uh, that certainly didn't make it better. <laughs> well, that's the whole idea. I mean, it's like I keep telling people, if you want to win a federal court case, you have to hurt these people. You have to apply the known rules of warfare using words on paper instead of bullets. You have to hurt these people. You have to apply what I call the amoeba principle. Are you familiar with that? The law is, you better be careful. The law is that you don't hurt federal judges. Uh, I can hurt their careers. Okay, that's better. Dora, I keep telling you, I use words on paper instead of bullets. That cannot be construed as a threat. Okay? Don't ever threaten a judge. Well, I never have. There's mm -hmm. no point in it. Mm -hmm. All right? I don't threaten a judge. Because this isn't that you're doing anything wrong. It's just that they will make up a charge that you did. And well, it doesn't have to be true. Well, that's possible. But bear in mind that, you know, if they get me, that's no big deal. Because all my people move as a unit. In other words... A 372 goes out, doesn't matter who writes it. Okay. All now, over the country who pick it up and file it. Now, what did you have in mind for Memphis uh, Public Access? Uh, well, that's your area of expertise. What I was going to do was like a, a talk show program. See, Memphis has a very heavy black population. So you would do a talk show program? Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, well, I've got a black preacher that's the, also the prison chaplain. At okay, now how would that, uh, how would we make that into a uh, chat with Glendora so that uh, it would be seen? Because I've started the uh, thing rolling down there. I've called them and told them I want their application and that I would like okay. a series. Well, you tell me. You're the expert. Uh, so what kind of a tape would you send me? I know. You could uh, send me a tape and I could uh, do an opening and a closing. Like I said, you're the expert in that in that area. Yeah, listen to me. Yeah. Okay, you could send me a t uh, uh, something and make it about. Uh, let's see, it should, the whole thing should be twenty nine thirty, and then uh, the opening and uh, make your piece about. Uh, I would say make it about uh, twenty one to twenty two minutes. Yeah. And then I can uh, take that tape and then put an opening and a closing, and then. Uh, Put yours in the middle. Well, like I said, you're the expert in that area. So you could do it that way, and it would still be a chat with Glendora. But it has to be a chat with Glendora because that's the thing that I am uh, not responsible for, oh. and that's the thing that I have the control over. Well, see, I've got a, I got some really nifty tapes coming to you. Yes, those have come, by the way. There, uh, Bill has sent them from Connecticut up to White Plains. Well, no, I have, I have some other tapes. Might be even more interesting. I gave a seminar inside the state prison at Jeff City to 138 convicts, showing them how to apply the known rules of warfare to their court cases. Six hours. And I'm, I've got one of those slated for you. Okay, keep out the word warfare. I don't like it. <laughs> I just don't like that. Uh, well, that's good, yes. And I'm looking forward to your tapes uh, when they come, when I got them. Now, we've had bad snowstorms here, and we've been uh, snowed in. Uh, so when they come, I will screen them, and then I will see if I can't get the public access channel filled up in Long Island with them. How about military tactics? that sound okay? Uh, no, I don't like warfare and military because of... Uh, you don't teach people how to use military tactics in court proceedings. They're going to lose. That's well, uh, okay, no, I, I just don't like it. I mean, it smacks of sedition, and uh, not that it is. But uh, these people are so crazy, they will accuse you of that. And without a basis at all, just the way they don't have any basis of accusing uh, Budro of laundry. Well, uh, that's, that's true, too. And uh, it, it certainly happened to us. Uh, they, uh, we went into the Uniondale courthouse, and we were beat up by a Pinkerton. And uh, Pinkerton lied uh, that he didn't do it, and that uh, we touched him. And, of course, we didn't. 
And uh, so we never did anything wrong, but we had a whole year, two years, four years ago, and we had two years of litigation, a phony trial, uh, and uh, all of this probation. Finally, they gave up, and they, they ran away from the probation. They zapped it. But, they, but we never did anything wrong. You don't have to do anything wrong because they just make up lies about you, and it goes through their whole rotten system. Well, that's, that's true, but by the same token, you have to fight back. Well, you do have to fight back, there's no question about it. But I would rather put it this way, uh, that you stand up for America and you stand up for your rights. You don't have any rights, or you had no... Oh, yes, I have them. <laughs> I have them. Uh, I have them. They are being, uh, uh, they are being uh, stolen, but I have them. Well, see, that's, what I, that's the first thing I teach in a seminar. I ask people, you know, what are your constitutional rights? Can you give them to me in one sentence? And the answer is, you don't have any. No, I won't go for that. I have them. Well, you have them, but how many times have you got the courts to acknowledge them? Oh, right, right. That's different, but I still have them, and they're not going to forget that. I won't let them forget that. In this court system, see, that's where you and I would differ is, I mean, in 27 years I've been fighting these dirt bags. Yes. I've never seen them acknowledge anybody's rights. No, right. Oh, they're terrible. Well, exactly. But oh, they're terrible. Yeah, the only rights you have are those you make yourself. I mean, they're there, they're words on paper, but in the hands of these judges today, they yeah. don't mean anything. They have no effect. Okay, honey, you're right. Okay, uh, joke of the day. Okay. Lawyer said to the judge, I want a new trial on the basis of new evidence. And the judge says, what's the new evidence? And the lawyer said, I just found out my client has another $4,500. <laughs>
372 about uh, Toflat or whatever his name is, Yogurt or whatever his name is. Yeah. And that's how I heard about her. And I'm thinking is that you're fighting a war with no quartermaster. You might want to think about selling books on how to use the legal system or something like that to raise money. No, 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 I can't. You think I got time for that? I just got out five huge. Oh, by the way, I'm sending these to you. Uh, I'm fighting uh, Griesa and McCasey, uh, who said Glendora should be fined $500 because she filed a lawsuit in the United States District Court in Alabama. <laughs> and then another one is uh, uh, in Brooklyn, uh, District Court. These are great, great works. And, of course, you know, they take hours and hours. They take 80 hours to write mm -hmm. and get them printed and sent out. And those have just been served. And so... Uh, Right now, I, that's why I had no time to call you. Sure, I'll send you a card. You want copies of those? Uh, the problem is, I, if, if it's voluminous, I don't have time to read it. That's my problem, too. Yeah, because, see, most of the work I do is get people out of prison. Oh, well, it's wonderful. Yeah, and I, I mean, I have to just go after one transcript after another. Oh, gosh. The beauty of 372s, uh -huh. they're limited to five pages. Well, they are, except that you add a uh, statement of facts and you add a uh, something else, and you've got them up to quite a few pages. No, 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 no. See, the way you do it is... Yeah, I know what a 372 is, five pages. You limit it to five pages. For the next five pages, file another 372. Well, yeah, that's good, too. Okay. Yeah. You need to get other people to do it, because what will happen is, like, if you file three of them in a row, yeah. then they'll tell you you're not allowed to file anymore. See, that's why I have people all over the country. Oh, that's crooked. Okay. You know, what kind of a country is this? You know, this is America. Certainly you're allowed to file as many as you want. No, there's case law that after you file the first three... Case law is not made by Congress. I understand, but it's the one the courts go by. That's the problem. I don't care if they go by it or not. They're wrong. Well, Congress made no such law. Of course they're, they're wrong. But the only thing I'm interested in is show me what works. If it doesn't, yeah. I'm not going to do it. Uh, okay, now let's see. All right, now what is this? Uh, let's do a, uh, a synopsis here. Uh, what are we going to do? Uh, you're going to send me... Uh, I'm going to send you uh, Colleen McMahon 372. You take a look at it, and if you want to have the honor of being the first one... You mean just signing it? Yeah, just signing it and submitting it. Sending it sending it down to Ralph K. Winter. Cause I got no, he's gone, you know. Oh, where'd he go? Oh, yeah. He's no longer the chief gut, judge. Oh, who is? Just a second. Uh, John Walker. John Walker? Yeah. No, Winter has been uh, ostracized to Connecticut. Why is that? Well, it's, I don't know how they do it. I, I don't know how they do it, but they do. And before uh, Winter, the one was just as bad, John Newman. Yeah, well, they replace him, I think, every seven years. Oh, okay. Well, then Winter's gone. Okay, and Winter's not my favorite season. <laughs> so he's gone. Uh, you know, he's back teaching at Yale. And another one is just bad there at Yale. He's a professor at Yale, is oh, Calabresi. Slow down, slow down, Bernard. Are you saying that Ralph K. Winter is no longer a... No, he's on the circuit. Oh. But I, I don't know if he's an active judge anymore. Well, wait a minute. How can he be on the circuit and be teaching at Yale at the same time? That's, because they do. That's a full-time job. No, they don't. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. See? They, uh... Uh, all right, then maybe he had caught it, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, you can have that. I'll give you that. No worry, yes, because we hit him with an avalanche at 372. If you want to reach winter, you uh, you won't read it at uh, 40 Foley Square anymore. Okay. Uh, his address would be the United States District Court in uh, New Haven, Connecticut. That's where you reach winter, but he's gone. Yep. I mean, he might come in. Uh, yeah, but he's still a federal judge. Oh, sure, and he's still a circuit judge. Yeah, I got you. And, but the new judge, I think, is John Walker. I do not know his middle initial. Well, I can look that up easily enough. Okay. okay. Huh. Uh, but he, you know who John Walker is? He's a cousin of uh, George Bush. Oh, really? Oh, really? Oh. oh, yes. How close a cousin is he? Pretty close, I think. Well, that's interesting. That Very interesting. Gives me another way to destroy him. There's a lot of people out there that hate George W. Well, wait, this is, I don't mean George W., I mean his father. Well, I fail to see the difference between the two of them. <laughs> but that's who the cousin is. Right, I got okay. you. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, let's uh, let's get this thing rolling. All right. Like I said, I think uh, 
this Saturday I'm supposed to have another set of tapes from that seminar I gave in the uh, Jeff City Prison. Okay. Those to you. This sounds good. Well, I had a ball up there, i got to tell you. And I will do my best to, of course, this is going to take a lot of time, and, uh, you know, time is really hard to find, uh, but I will, my hope would be uh, to get these tapes and fill up our public access channel with them. Well, I'll do what I can on my end. No, don't do that. I mean, uh, I'm, don't give me any more. <laughs> any more tapes or any more channels? Oh, no, well, channels, that would be nice, too. Well, which one do you, do you not want? Well, no, I think we're getting off the track here. Start over again. Uh, I would like uh, to see uh, these. Uh, sometimes we have empty uh, time on the channel. Mm -hmm. And I told uh, Cablevision that, I said, what's your thought about that? My thought is, is that it's not good uh, to have uh, the, the blank channel. Don't you think it's better to have some program on there, good or bad? And they all agree with me. Well, good. Well, so I'm hoping, uh, but you understand that this takes time, and I don't have a lot of time. I understand. Uh, so my hope would be to get those to Cablevision and uh, and see if we can't uh, get you the exposure and uh, and do the movement some good. Okay, well, <coughs> turn me loose. I'll do what I can. All right. Okay. All right. You'll, well, I guess we'll hear from each other directly. Yeah. Okay. Now, do uh, just hold on and let me see. Uh, it's an interesting thing that the area code for Springfield, Massachusetts is 413. Isn't that interesting? 417. No, Springfield, Missouri is 417. Springfield, Massachusetts is 413. Oh, that is kind of interesting. Yeah, it's kind of. Uh, okay, now let's see. Do Let me make sure I have your address. Uh, okay, could you give me your address, please? Post office box 4884. Okay. Four eight eight four. That's a lucky number, and that's uh, Springfield, Missouri. What? Six five eight zero eight. Six five eight zero eight. Six five eight zero eight. Well, good for you. You're an American hero. <laughs> yeah, you are. I don't know. Boy. That I'm a jailhouse lawyer. Oh, good for you. Good, good, good. In fact, I'm the guy who left five sticks of dynamite in the UN building back in '74. What? You might remember that. What? There were five sticks of dynamite left in the United Nations building in New York in 1974. No, I don't know about that. Well, I'm the guy who left them there. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Okie doke, Bill. It's Mike. I mean, Mike, excuse me. That's okay. Yeah. I'm you're sorry getting, about that. You're getting confused with uh, Bill Budrow. Well, I'm also getting confused because it's the first of month and that's when the bills come. Oh, okay. Do you take contributions? <laughs> no, no. Why not? No, uh, people can... Uh, no, no, because public access is supposed to be without money. Uh, it's an interesting question, uh, but uh, for the time being, let's put it on the shelf. Okay. Uh, no, I'm very, very poor. Okay. And what makes me poor is the printing and the postage. And, uh, I understand. Yeah. And I had to give up my business, which was a good business, because I found all this corruption and started to fight it. So I had no income. Yeah. Yeah, my business is going to our TV ads. I help people do commercials on oh, TV. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. You don't have that business anymore? Oh, I have it. I just don't have time to uh, go out and find the business. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay, well, it sounds, sounds pretty good. I mean, it sounds like... You know, you've got what I need, and I may have what you need. Oh, it's terrific what you're doing. Uh, keep the courage flaming, and, uh, you know, just keep up the fight. I think it's great what you're doing. I'm so glad to know about it. But after for 27 years, I'm not quitting now. <laughs> I've been doing it for about uh, six or seven, I guess. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's about to turn around. I mean, even Bill O'Reilly on the O'Reilly Factor. Oh, uh, right. Bill uh, spoke to me about that. And I, he gives it on Channel 22 in Connecticut. I don't know where it is up here in uh, New York. Yeah. I'll have to find out. But that's great what he said about, uh, that's good. Well, if you get a chance, if you're down at the um, White Plains Federal Courthouse, pull a Laspina file. Yeah, I've got it down. You wrote U.S. versus St. Germain. Well, you can see samples of my legal work. Okay. I set the record for the 20th century on pretrial motions. And especially, you read McMahon's rulings. <laughs> She's such a twit. Oh, she is. Well. She she really is. Well. She was over in state Supreme Court, you know, County of Westchester. That's where they got her from. Court of Claims, wasn't she? No, I don't think so. Yeah. Well, that's what I read in the Almanac Confederal Judiciary, but could be wrong. In the Court of Claims? 
Yeah. I don't think so. Well, that's what it says in the almanac. Yeah? That's okay. Yeah, look, any observation you can make on her, I would appreciate because I want to do an avalanche of 372 on 372s on her. I mean, yeah. People all over the United States complaining about her. But uh, how do they have any personal knowledge to complain about her? You don't have to have any personal knowledge. You don't even have to have standing on a 372. But that's not... That's two different things, standing and personal knowledge. How, how can you complain a judge, about a judge if you haven't been injured by that judge? You read the five pages, you have personal knowledge. And you don't, the knowledge... No, you know, that's hearsay within hearsay. No, no, no. Against the federal rules of evidence. No, no, you... No, 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 Glendora, the federal rules of evidence do not apply to 372s. But it's still hearsay upon hearsay. So what? Oh, so plenty. I think you better, uh, I think you better think deeply about that one. No, I don't need to think deeply about it. I'm, you know, I'm the one who invented all these techniques for 372s, and they work. They may work, but that doesn't answer my question, that when you sign them, you don't have personal knowledge of them. You don't have to have personal knowledge. I mean, if you read the rules, and all you got to do is pick up a telephone and call the Second Circuit Court of Appeals, they'll send you the free book on how to do a 372. Oh, yes, I have that. Well, then go read it, because it'll tell you that you don't have to have personal knowledge. You don't have to have standing. Anybody can complain. And the only thing they send them back for is if you send a bunch of duplicates in from different people. And even that's a felony, Title 18, Section 2071. I saw that in your 372. Yeah, yeah, so it's a, no, it's the best career buster there is for these jerks. So you wouldn't be reading these things if I sent them to you. You don't have time to read them. Now, which things are those? Uh, my, uh, 90-page paper on, uh, Raji and my, uh... Well, oh, I can, well, do you want me to 372 these guys? I mean, if you want me to 372 them, I'll write. Oh, definitely, uh, well, definitely Thomas P. Griese, the former chief judge of, uh... Send them to me, because you're gonna, you're gonna get them back as 372s. Oh, well, gee, that's great. Okay. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I'll show you how to scrape these jerks off the bench. Not as if I haven't got two of them under my belt already. One United States attorney, three state prosecutors, two of them from New York. What, wait, what about these people? You got rid of them? I scraped them off the bench. Yeah, Peggy Daddick and I got uh, Hatchet down in Atlanta, and I got uh, Ramirez in uh, Sacramento in 89. Uh, I got uh, Alan M. Burson, United States attorney. Where? Uh, in San Diego. I got him. He's now a public school superintendent. Really? Yeah. I got the state judge Thomas K. McGuire here in 96. State Judge, Missouri? Yeah, State Judge in Missouri. I got two New York State prosecutors, Joe Katz and April Smith. I flamed them both. Um, I got one in Kentucky. He's been so long. Well, uh-huh. Oh, I think that's great. Well, I mean, you got but, but 372s, I don't think, apply to uh, losers, do they? The what? To uh, assistant U.S. attorneys? No, no, you RICO them. That's what we did to Burson. We, we hit him with about a 30-page RICO. And uh, he knew when that hit, he had no chance of ever becoming a federal judge because when three names are put in nomination and one of them has a 30-page RICO fall out of his personnel file, the other two don't, he's toast. Okay, I hope you're right about this. Ain't no, ain't no hope about it. Okay. Well, I've, been, I've been hurting these people for 27 years. And every week I learn a new way to get them. In fact, as we're speaking now... I don't like that language. Well... You hurt this one, you get them, and so forth. Well, I'm sorry. I spent four years in the regular army, and it's you know, <laughs> a habit to break. And so did my husband, and he was in D-Day to a Victory in Europe oh, Day. Oh, really? Yeah, he, he was there in D-Day, Victory in Europe Day. Oh, yeah, I was in the 101st and 82nd Airborne Division. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm younger than he is, obviously. Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah, but the guys who trained me were World War II vets. Well, good for you. How old are you? 58. Oh, good age, good age. Okay. All right, well, uh, like I said... I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. Remember, you and I have a common enemy. Yes, America. America. Oh, no, no, no. No, America has a common enemy. Well, yeah, but uh, the problem is most of these people are just... You and I and America. How's that? That'll, that'll work. Okay, that's right. I'll talk to you later. That's what I meant. Okay, doke. All right, now keep the courage flaming. Will do. All righty. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Regarding the pickup of public or beast access tapes, please call Vanessa at 393-3631.
trying to reach you. Uh, maybe tomorrow will be a better day, Wednesday. Uh, and, uh, gee, leased access tapes. I'd like to see some of those leased access tapes. Can that be arranged? You take care, Amy. Thanks for everything that you do for all of us. It's appreciated. Bye-bye. Maybe that's the end. Those were yesterday's uh, chats with Glendor. I think it's time and overtime that you had some jokes. Teachers, school teachers will tell you that for every child who has